Welcome back. In the last example, we saw that an integral from a to infinity should be thought of as a limit of real definite integral from a to t as t goes to infinity. So let's put that in a definition. So definition 7.1.1, improper integrals of type 1. Let f be a continuous function. The integral from a to infinity of f of x dx should be limit as t goes to positive infinity, integral from a to t, f of x dx. All right, we'll do a similar thing for minus infinity. So here we replace infinity by t and let t go to infinity as a limit. We'll do the same thing here. We're going to replace minus infinity by t. And then we're going to take t to minus infinity. All right, so we say that the interval converges if the limit gives a finite number, so a real number. We then say that the integral diverges if the limit gives anything else. So if it's positive infinity, minus infinity, or if it does not exist. All right. So for any a in R, if both the integral from a to positive infinity and the integral from minus infinity to a converge. So that means both give you a finite number. Then you could make sense of the integral from minus infinity to positive infinity. That should be the integral from minus infinity to a dx plus the integral from a to positive infinity f of x dx. So if you want to make sense of this integral, you don't have a choice. You have to split it. You choose where you split it. Your a's, the a is up to you. You look at both of these separately. These are both limits. As long as both limits give you a finite number, then you could add them and you get this limit. If they don't give you finite numbers, if one of them is infinite, both are infinite, anything like that, then the integral diverges. Then this integral diverges. Note that you may choose any value of a when considering this integral. Your answer will not depend on your choice of a. All right, so let's try some example. Evaluate the following improper integrals. So integral from 4 to positive infinity of 1 over x6. You could see right away this is the issue. One of my bounds is infinite. So to make sense of this, I'm going to take a limit and I replace the bound that's infinite by t. Now, this is an honest definite integral. I can apply our techniques to it. Um, in this case, you just need the power rule. I'll get x to the minus 5 over minus 5. And FTC tells me that I take this antiderivative, plug in the two bounds. So that means. I am going to get t to the minus 5 over minus 5 minus 4 to the minus 5 over minus 5. All right, so let me rewrite it in a way that will make the limit easier to evaluate. So minus 5 t to the 5 plus 1 4 to the 5 times 5. All right, so the first time, the first term gives you um, 1 over minus infinity, that's 0. Second gives you um, 1 over 5,120, and so that's the only term that's left. The other term gives 0. 